Now let's use this reductions technique in order to show, using a different method, that the halting language is undecidable. ATM is this acceptance language which says all of the machine input pairs such that that machine accepts that input. Halt is this halting language where if we give it machine input pairs, it is going to return true if that machine halts when it runs on this input. So something to keep in mind is that in order to accept, in order for a Turing machine to accept an input, it had to halt on that input first. The only way to accept is to halt first. So that means that every Turing machine description pair that belongs to ATM also belongs to halt. So ATM is a subset of halt. Because in order to accept, we had to halt. Everything that accepts also halts, but not everything that halts also accepts. Because you can halt and reject. We're going to use this idea for our reduction. We're going to use this observation for our reduction. So to show that halt is undecidable, is not computable using our reduction. Halt, recall, is every machine description and input pair for which that machine is going to halt on that input. So in order to show that halt is undecidable, this should be ATM. We're going to show that ATM isn't any harder than halt. So we want to use a solver for blank to build a solver for blank. So one of these blanks has halt in it. One of these blanks has ATM in it. Which is which? Discuss that with your neighbors. Which one goes in the first blank, halt or ATM? So we want to use a solver for halt in order to build a solver for ATM. So in this case, what we're trying to do is to show halt as undecidable. Right, so that's the thing that we want to show as impossible to do. ATM is the thing we already knew was impossible to do in this circumstance. So we knew that ATM was impossible. We want to show that halt is impossible. So what we want to do is say then that if halt was possible, then we could use it to accomplish the impossible. So since we knew ATM was impossible, we wanted to show that we could use a solver for halt in order to build a solver for ATM. So that if halt was possible, since we could have used it to do the impossible, halt must have been impossible as well. So in this case, ATM is playing the role of the door. Halt is playing the role of the fire. We're going to come in in advance knowing this door can't be opened, and we're going to use that fact to demonstrate lighting a fire was impossible. So that's what we're going to do. Here's what our reduction is going to look like. Let's assume, towards reaching a contradiction, that halt was decidable. We could compute halt. That means that there must have been some Turing machine, I'm going to call it R, some Turing machine that decides halt. That is the definition of what it means to compute something, what it means to decide something, is we can have this Turing machine that computes it for us. So let's call that Turing machine R, whatever it is. We're going to show that we can use R, whatever that machine was. I don't care what it is except for the fact that it decides halt. So I'm going to use R to build this new machine D, which decides ATM. So here's our machine D that's going to solve ATM for us. So here's our machine D. It accepts two things as input, a machine description and an input string. Let's call those M and W. And it's going to need to tell us yes or no, true, false, one, zero, something like that as the output for this. So that's what this machine needs to do for us. Say yes or no for that machine input pair. And we're assuming that there exists this Turing machine R that can decide halt for us. So that is, R can answer this question of does some machine on that input halt or does it run forever? So it's either going to halt or it's going to run forever. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and invoke this function R, this Turing machine R, on this input pair M and W that was given to ATM, to this machine D. So the first thing D is, it's, is going to do is it's going to invoke R on that input, on its input. 
So it's just going to invoke R on M and W. And R is going to tell us whether or not the machine halted. So if R rejects, that meant that that machine ran forever on that input. So if R rejects, that meant the machine ran forever on that input, which means it didn't accept. So we're just going to go ahead and reject in that circumstance. Whenever this machine R says no or says zero, machine D is going to return no as well. However, when machine R says yes, now all we knew is that it was going to halt. We didn't know whether or not it accepted. We only knew that it was going to halt. But what we can do is since we knew that it halts, we can just try it. We can just try running M on W and see what happens. Since I knew that was going to halt, that was not going to run forever because R told me so. If it's yes, what we're going to do is just say, all right, now do M on W, doing that universal Turing machine thing. So we have this idea of a universal Turing machine saying, I can have Turing machines that simulate other Turing machines that do the same thing that other Turing machines would do. So let's just do that universal Turing machine thing on M with W. And now we know that we're going to get an answer, either yes or no. So if when we ran M on W, the answer was no, then turns out we didn't accept that string. If the answer was yes, turns out we did. So if we had some method for solving halt, that told us it was safe to just try that machine on that input, to just invoke that implementation for that input, so that we can then just see how it answers. Because the only reason it might have been risky to do this M on W thing was if it ran forever, then we would never get an answer for D. So in this case, since halt warned us that was definitely going to halt, then we could just try it and then see what the answer actually was going to be. Since we knew that any Turing machine that decided halt, we didn't make any assumptions about what R was besides that it existed and solved halt for us, any Turing machine that decides halt, we can use that to compute or decide this function ATM. Since ATM was impossible, so was halt. So that's our reduction.